Well, hello everyone. Uh, we're going to give you a little time to to come in. I'm Virginia Robert. Uh, I'm the foreign desk editor for Les Echo, the French business daily. And uh, we're going to talk about a very incredible electoral year coming ahead. I hear an echo. Is that normal? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, well, Don't probably speak. normal. Not <laughs> Did you hear the echo too? Mm -hmm. No? The sound is very loud. Um, so to discuss this incredible year we have ahead of us, uh, I have with me um, Igor Jorgens, who's uh, from Russia. He's a man of insurance. He's been involved in the insurance industry for many years and uh, several associations. And he's also involved in the Russian International Affairs Council. Next to him is Isabelle Lasser, who is a journalist just like me. Uh, she's the diplomatic correspondent for Le Figaro, the French newspaper, very well known. She's been a defense uh, correspondent, diplomatic correspondent, foreign correspondent, war reporter. So she's done it about all. And she just wrote a, um, um, a book about Putin and uh, Macron that is uh, going uh, very well. The book is. Maybe not the relationship, but the book is doing very well. And next to me is uh, Hiroyu Akita, who is a senior writer for Nikkei. He publishes commentaries and columns on foreign affairs and security affairs. And uh, he's worked uh, all over the place, in London, in Washington, in Beijing. He's been a foreign correspondent, so he knows uh, foreign affairs very well. And behind us, I see Monsieur Gruffa, who joined us uh, finally through a video link. <laughs> Welcome. And uh, he's a banker. And he, I met him in, in New York when he was working for City at the time. And he's involved in, in many, many uh, different projects. So before we, we start the panel, I'd like to share with you um, a study that came out yesterday, actually. And it's a study published by International Idea, and that's an intergovernmental um, group that is based in Sweden and that monitors the, um, the state of democracy. And the findings are really pretty appalling because it, show, it shows that in 2022, the world has entered the longest democratic recession ever observed, which means that for the sixth consecutive year, democratic values are losing ground everywhere. And I mean everywhere, I mean in Europe, I mean in the Americas, in India, in Russia. And declines have occurred in the very foundations of democracy revealing weaknesses in the electoral processes, in the ability of legislators to act as checks on executive overreach, and also the difficulty for people to access the institutions of justice. You have countries, for instance, like Tunisia, Afghanistan, Belarus, Nicaragua, or Myanmar, that have shown great recessions, regressions last year. And this institutional weakness is compounded by continuing declines in core democratic rights, including freedom of expression, freedom of association and, as and, and assembly, and sorry, and freedom of the press. And Europe, of course, is not immune because according to the report, the rule of law has weakened, and it won't surprise many of you, but in Hungary and <laughs> Austria, where freedom of expression falters, access to justice is more difficult in the UK as well as in France, where the freedom to assembly is also fading. Poland last year had many factors deteriorating, and the recent elections won by the opposition might, might pave the way for a betterment. So it is not an overstatement to say that globally, democracy now faces pressure everywhere, with authoritarian regimes tightening their grip, and too many elected leaders adopting authoritarian tactics to cling to control. Meanwhile, you have misinformation campaigns, political polarization, and rising inequality that erode people's trust in democracy. So, as you probably agree with me, it is of paramount importance that democracy shows their resilience. Not all political regions are equal. And next year's elections will show indeed if the democratic process is able to rebound. 